Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here then hi, my name is Miss Paris and I'm a newly qualified primary school teacher here in the UK. I have just filmed, literally a few seconds ago, the first part of my teaching standards evidencing video that covered some tips as well as talking about examples that you could have for TS 1 to 3. Now I'm going to carry on and talk about TS 4 to 8. I won't go through every subtype because then we could be here for a while, but just to kind of give you an idea of what evidence that you could use for these. After TS 3 comes TS 4 and that's about planning well-structured lessons, making use of lesson time effectively, and making sure that you have an engaging curriculum. You can stimulate children's intellectual curiosity, as well as maybe providing homework so that they continue to go over certain topics or certain work to make sure that they don't forget. So obviously, even just listing them out, there's a few that kind of spring to mind. If you have any homework, put that in there. If it's differentiated homework, lovely. That also goes along with TS5 which is about differentiation. You can also put a picture of any resources you've done or any worksheets you've done, especially if they're quite engaging or fun or funky and the children really responded well to that because that goes with promote a love of learning as well as contribute to the design and provision of an engaging curriculum. So any resources that you have used, any lesson plans that you have done, I would stick that in there. If it's some kind of concrete resource that you can't physically put in the folder, take a picture of it. You do need to make sure that there's no like children's names on it or children's faces, etc., due to GDPR, but especially any resources, even if they're laid out on the table, you can just take a picture of that and put it in the folder. Easy. The next one is TS5. It is about adapting teaching to the strengths and the needs of all pupils. And it's important when they say all pupils because we often think we need to differentiate for those that need extra support or that might not be working to the level that you would hope for in that year group. And of course you need to do this, but when focusing on that, you can often forget about those children that may be finding the work a bit too easy or may need a challenge or are working at greater depth. And the thing is with that, if you forget those children, sometimes if they finish early or they kind of find it a bit boring, their attention might deteriorate, they might be distracted or not focused or daydreaming, and that's not helping to promote good pupil progress. So it's important to highlight the all pupils. So when you are demonstrating evidence of differentiating to pupils, make sure you do it for children that are kind of pre-working towards, working towards, that are, you know, where you want them to be, and also children who are working at greater depth, because they can't be forgotten either. Another thing that is mentioned in Teaching Standard 5 is understanding the different barriers that might occur in a, child, in a child's learning. If they maybe have a special educational need, then you will have to differentiate depending on, on what their need is. But for example, if you have a child with autism, maybe creating a resource or a worksheet that focuses on their intensive interests could not only promote that love of learning that is TS4, but it would also mean that they are more engaged and that they can actually complete the work because they are interested in it. Even if it's still related to maths and they have an intensive interest on, I don't know, dinosaurs or aircrafts, even if you put a word problem in there about a dinosaur or an aircraft, or at the end, if they've done all their work, they can maybe have a little colouring in picture to do at the end. It really depends, again, on the, the age, what level they're working at, um, whether they've got dyslexia or ADHD or autism or other things. I can't give you the right answers on how to differentiate, but all of these things that you do, even if you do research on maybe how to differentiate for a child with autism and you've made notes, put those notes in there because that can count as well. You are actively trying to find ways to support that child. Link to that is, and I'll read it, it says, demonstrate an awareness of the physical, social, and intellectual development of children and how to adapt teaching to them. Now, sometimes children might have needs that aren't related to academia. They might have social or emotional needs that are maybe based on trauma in earlier life. And so you need to think about how you can support them in the classroom as well. And this is where it kind of links to TS7. They might demonstrate their needs through certain behavioral actions. And in order to keep those down, you need to support their needs. So you can see how those two kind of interrelate but it's important to be aware that it's not all just about academia. Do they go to ELSA or do you maybe give them some, some learning on social emotional skills or do you practice that maybe with somebody? 
Or do you have a special reward chart where it's about making sure that they have kind hands and feet during playtime or to make sure that they are playing safely? All these kind of things I'm just thinking with my primary head on. But it's really important and just put that in your evidence folder. I mean, it, it's helping the children but it's also important for you to realise all the good things you're doing and put that evidence in as well. Teaching standard six is sometimes quite a tricky one if you haven't been involved with it but it's about making accurate and productive use of assessments. Now there is the formal statutory assessments such as maybe SATs or phonic screening tasks, those kind of things, in which case you can either say how you will use those to create later lessons or how you're working towards one of them. So it's talking about the first one, 6A, is talking about know and understand how to assess the relevant subject and curriculum areas. So even if you've done a skit training session on phonics screening and you've kind of made some extra notes, you can put those in. If you've done an assignment on GCSEs or A-levels and how those, how the exam framework works, put that in, put your extra research in. It also talks about formative and summative assessments. Now formative assessments are those little kind of understanding checks that you do in the middle of a lesson and summative is kind of a summary of let's say a whole topic. So formative might be, okay, let's say they're doing, um, they're beginning algebra and you say a kind of equation and you ask them to write it on your boards and show them. That would be a formative assessment. You're not writing it down, it's not formal, but you can kind of see, okay, that child knew straight away they were on it, they showed me within two seconds. This child wasn't sure I could see that child copying, so maybe they're a bit hesitant. Those kind of things, they're more for you and on how you can adapt your teaching for them later on. Summative is at the end of a topic, maybe giving them an informal test that's kind of paper-based and that you can check afterwards, that kind of thing. So if you've done anything related to that, whether you have made a kind of summative test or, or you could put some examples of formative assessments you've done during the lesson, you could write that down. It also says to use data to monitor progress, set targets and plan subsequent lessons. So like I said, where you can link it to TS4, you can then say, okay, based on the summative assessment from last year, I can see that some children will need to recap this and so my first lesson is going to be split in half where some children can kind of do a recap and move on, some need to completely learn this again. And then of course there's the regular feedback that's both given orally and through marking. So if you have a, a page in a child's book with lots of marking, you can just take a picture of that and that would count as well. Now I've got it kind of here <laughs> just so I can cover as much information as I can. So teaching standard seven is about managing behavior effectively and ensuring you have a safe learning environment. It's actually quite helpful teaching standard seven because it gives you some ideas of things you could do. So have clear rules and routines for behavior in classrooms and take responsibility for promoting good and courteous behavior. Okay, so anything related to a set of class rules you have, anywhere where you've got some kind of behavior chart, especially where you praise those children who are doing the correct thing, rather than always sanctioning those that aren't. If you have especially a behavior chart that kind of goes up and rewards children doing the right thing, this is a really good example of that. It then talks about high expectations of behavior, rewards, sanctions, praise, how are you doing that? Do maybe individual children have a reward chart? Maybe you could show that. Could you take a picture of the general behavior policy? You can show that, especially as you always have to kind of talk about the evidence that you've given. So say you have a picture of your reward chart, then just explain what it is, explain the impact, and explain how it's been beneficial to that child's learning. So if, for example, they are more motivated to learn now because they have something to work towards, then write that down because that's helping their progress in the long run and also it's helping their behavior which is good for the general class as well. It also talks about maintaining a good relationship with the pupils. Now what I did with this I linked it to teaching standard one which which speaks about creating a safe and secure environment with the children and what I did for this evidence is that I had obviously before COVID and stuff I had a kind of morning greeting on the door. You might have seen it, there's quite a few viral videos that go around, but do you high five, do you handshake, do you hug, do you just wave, do you do a funky dance? And the children could decide what they wanted to do as they were walking into the room, which is a nice way to greet them and it just starts the morning well. And that's about building a relationship with the children. Teaching standard eight is about fulfilling other professional responsibilities 
so it talks about speaking with other staff, deploying support staff, but also contributing to the wider life of the school. So did you help in a charity bake sale, for example? Keep a picture of that poster. Did you deploy staff effectively? Could you maybe take a picture of the notes that you gave them? Or is there a part of your lesson plan which talks about the TA? Then highlight that and put that in. Again, talk about how it was effective, how it was helpful, how it benefited the children. Another thing is about communicating effectively with the parents. Now this could be done in parents' meeting, it could be done by sending a postcard home, by talking to them at the end of the day, just write notes about how that went. Um, it could be maybe a phone call home. This one's always a good one because it can be both for positive and negative reasons and it shouldn't always be focused on the negative because children have lots of successes too. So this is one I would recommend not just generally for your practice but also that's a a really good one to put in your teaching standard eight evidence okay so i'm speaking really quickly <laughs> because my battery is on red this is the third video i've done so i'm going to try and rush through this but there is lots of information available on the internet if you want more specific examples for part two this is about personal and professional conduct now this can be difficult to evidence because it's things like have you arrived promptly at School, have you made sure never to give your personal political opinion things like this so what I did is I asked my mentor to write a reference for me specifically talking about some of the aspects of part two so she would say how I was always prompt she would say how I've been professional and always conducted myself in a positive and respectful manner around the school you know it also talks about well-being the British values I'll leave a link to a really good British values video down below for you to check out so if this video helped, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below. Don't forget also, if you haven't already, to go check out the first one because there are some additional tips alongside some examples for teaching standards one, two, and three. I'll see you soon. Bye.